party the midnight summer away with fairies, druids, and all things mystical at the Mattress Factory's 2019 Urban Garden Party, Solstice, on Friday, June 21st. Feast and imbibe with some of the city's best restaurants and bars. Hit the dance floor with music by Beauty Slap, Bad Custer, and DJ Samuel Andres, and bid on one-of-a-kind works at the art auction. Tickets are on sale now at mattress.org. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Hey guys, it's time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the Awesome Cast episode 447. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA. And I got a crew all in studio, as we like to do. First of all, on the couch is John Chichilla at Chilla on the Twitter. He is a gadget guru over at Big Bank International Esquire. And I don't own a Tesla. And he does not own a Tesla. Just saying. <laughs> just, just in case you're wondering. <laughs> In case you're wondering, and then over <laughs> over uh, at the table, uh, consuming the tacos. I'm having a taco party. <laughs> She's having her own taco party over Not there. Not even kidding. Oh, geez. We, we got the beers. I know. We got, we the, got beer, the beers. We got the tacos. Katie Dudas. She's the... Uh, we have the best guest ever, by the way. Sales and marketing director over at the Scare House. I don't even care what you call me. I'm sorry. I don't... <laughs> <laughs> that's what her, her macbook doesn't actually work it just it just hauls it's tacos around yeah. it's, like, it's my taco it's my mac taco that's holder it's like it's like the old imac that's the uh the fish tank it just, it just holds tacos so how you do you're oh. you're you're recovering from uh some post rogue laser ground oh, build, oh yeah. you're in build season yeah building that's why i look like this <laughs> <laughs> I probably that's why I'm over here. I smell probably. And you were too. selling props this this weekend. Yeah, we did I a pro- big prop sale. Was it so? Was it like a scare house yard sale? Mm-hmm. Pretty much. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, we what? had a lot of people come out. They had a I, lot of fun. It was so much fun, like seeing people really geek out about props. Yeah, that had like the, a special meaning to them. It was uh, like, oh, I need to take these home. What was the coolest thing that you sold? Oh, cool. What was the one thing that's like? Oh, I, I wish that person we had hadn't bought that because I wanted it. A no, I didn't skin. want that. There was a box of skin. That was the funniest thing we sold. <laughs> Um, I think the thing that we wanted is we had a lot of the black and white cutouts from the trick or treat haunt. Okay. That mm. I do not have a place in my home for, but they were really cool. Yeah. Like these, they're kind of cutesy black and white characters, nice. but they're on, they're flat and they're okay. big. But yeah. Okay. But the fox's skin was fun. The fox's skin would be. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hearing that voice over there, it is your uncle crappy, Mike Pound. He is here. I did not <laughs> misschedule the show again. I am, it's, I owe Uncle oh, Crappy so much. Wait, right? Now. I forgot about something. I have to leave. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! Oh no! I'm he's uh, I'm kidding. He's a writer over there at the Pittsburgh Post Gazette. Yeah, right across the river. Uh, oh, right across the river. But one of right the across a couple rivers. I guess. Te- yeah, it's technically two rivers from the, here. On the North Shore. That's two um, bridges. I don't know. It depends on which way you go. There was just a thing um, uh, I saw on TV over the weekend at, uh, about a possible buyer for the downtown building. So really? Yeah, and they're talking about renovating it, and 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 I'm just like. Uh, don't renovate that building. Oh Good luck. God, knock it Good down luck, and right? And start over. Because mm-hmm. that thing is a mess. Isn't our bank need a tower? We could put one there. I don't know. What the, <laughs> I mean, it's going to be It's gonna be what everything else is. There'll be apartments or a hotel and retail restaurants on the bottom floors. Does it smell like cigarette smoke uh, yes. creeping over? Oh, I was, <laughs> yes. was going to say, coming from the USW, uh, <laughs> this United yeah, Steelworkers well, I mean, building. I mean, from what people used to do in the newsroom. That's um, true, too. Yeah. Plus, plus the printing press uh, on the ground floor. There were all kinds of interesting smells. Mm. Um, mm. I don't. I, yeah, I don't think I can't, I can't see how renovating that building would be an option. I really unless, can't. like, unless they want they wanted the like old timey. It's not even like it's just a box of a building. It's yeah. not like yeah. a classic news building, right? Um, it contemporary, like maybe in the. F- 50s yeah i don't, I don't know i that's I, I i think the exterior has been redone yeah um because it does remind me of some of kind of 60s era something um with it with the big which, which is just the elevator um there's a the big kind of thing that sticks up uh, off the top of the building huh. um that's just the elevator shaft jeez um building used to be shared uh with great animosity between the post gazette and the pittsburgh press Ooh. really um 
And until, I mean, if, if PG people like accidentally got off the, the wrong floor, um, Pittsburgh press people would, were like openly hostile. Wow. So, and so when, when, uh, there was, um, at the end of a joint operating agreement, um, because the PG, if I remember this right, the PG was printing, uh, they own the presses, they were printing the Pittsburgh press, um, PG went on strike. The press was shut down because the PG's owners would not print them any longer. That was the birth of the Pittsburgh Tribune Review because Richard Scaife thought, oh, okay, with all this other stuff going on, the press going out of business, I can make inroads here. Um, and a lot of people, I still, I still work with a fair amount of people who were Pittsburgh press employees who moved, who got jobs at the PG when all of that stuff happened. Um, so there's your history lesson for today. There you go. And we should have had you on the Professor Buzzkill episode. <laughs> <laughs> well, this, this week's history moment on Awesome yeah, Cast. Yeah. So. And, 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 and if you want to buy a building downtown, you, you may not be too late. Um, but I would, I would hurry <laughs> is, the, is the point of that. Oh, man. I mean, I can't imagine the, the, just the, the codes up here in Beach, Beachview, what the hell it is downtown. But uh, anyways, also Beer Me. Beer Me's doing great. Yes. Um, and we can we can talk about that now or more later, but um, we'll catch but yeah, up a little later. Uh, the the beer scene here is awesome, and uh, I'm happy to still be covering it. I'm passing, uh, he, he came with his cooler as he usually is sticker laden cooler uh, hanging out down there. Um, I have a uh, a monkey boy from East End Brewing. Yes, there you go. Um, I'm I'm diving back into the beers and the mm-hmm. brews and. And, and drinking what my friends recommend to me. And I think Katie's got something to, uh, supplementing her tacos over there, right? Remember from the Oh, you got Samuel Adams. Mm-hmm. There you go. <laughs> a, lovely, a lovely Rattler from Sam Adams. It goes great with my taco. Mm-hmm. I started with one of my last cans of snow melt from East End. That's uh, that their winter. Ooh. And now I'm drinking a mischievous brown ale from Helltown. Uh, and they're out in... Uh, in uh, Westmoreland County. There you go. There's your beer moment as well. There's your beer moment. Well, this is the Awesome Cast. You can check out everything at awesomecast.com and see what beers that uh, Uncle Crappy has suggested in the past in his episodes. Um, also, you can subscribe and rate us on your favorite podcast app and watch video versions on the Facebook and YouTube page for Awesome Cast. You can also uh, ask your Google Home or your uh, Amazon Echo to play your Awesome Cast on Google Music Podcasts or TuneIn or whatever app you may have connected that may carry us in a podcast you form uh we are of course live here every tuesday night at 7 p.m eastern on the facebook page and a few other outlets as well thanks to some multi-streaming that we are doing with our friends like uh matt Tressler, ponder of the tiny shutter podcast uh Ron- crazy kraus is hanging out with us tonight um and actually potter's let us know in the 1992 strike killed the pittsburgh press missed the second stanley cup run true <laughs> wow true um, there are there there are no uh, newspaper front pages of of that Stanley Cup run because there were no newspapers. Wow! Scaife hadn't started yet here. Um, he was just publishing in Greensburg. There was no newspaper in Pittsburgh to cover that thing. Jeez. Uh, but anyways, history moment two for tonight. Uh, you can also catch us on our streaming partners at riversedgepgh.com every uh, Saturday at 9 a.m. Eastern Time and our friends at the405media.com that carry us every weekday at 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern Time. And also you can drop a line to producer Missy out there in the back. Hi, producer Missy. Hi, Missy. Hey, what? If you, if you only saw, saw her show notes. If you only saw her show notes. Uh, at Sor- at also cast at SorgatronMedia.com. And uh, if you want to be out here to witness the show live in person, in studio, or if you want to advertise. Oh, yeah, I've got a new advertise. You guys probably heard at the beginning uh, if you're catching this on the podcast or uh, later on. Also, thank you to our Patreon supporters, Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast. Our friends at the Coffee Club $5 level, Matt Weller, John Dickey DeGore, and John Carmen. Uh, they're going to be here. Uh, we, we talked with Mike about... A little bit about what's what's the latest in digital media at the Post Gazette and uh, what he's excited for getting into over there. Uh, good conversation uh, we had with him, uh, and of course our friend, our longest running Patreon supporter. I know I saw him in the chat room 
earlier at the family show one dollar level michael fedor thank you so much everybody for supporting the awesome cast uh <laughs> it is time for our awesome things of the week and i'm gonna go find a link so that our producer is not gonna kill me in my sleep tonight it may be yes too late. okay so while i'm um reconciling that issue uh uncle crappy what is your awesome thing of the week today um have you um have you guys seen the moto z4 yet the the, the, the what, what, what is that the, the one that moto looks, z4 is that the one that looks like the razor i have no idea ah. um we, <laughs> you, you haven't seen it you haven't seen it because it's not it doesn't exist yet. well apparently it does exist um and amazon had it on its site briefly recently mm. someone managed to order one and the trouble is that uh, that all this was done before the phone was actually released. Oops. Um, Oops. And it, it actually, I mean, it's, it's interesting. Um, it includes a, a 360 de- degree camera um, that Whoa. Motorola apparently will be tossing in as a freebie when, whenever these things are available. Mm-hmm. But um, but yeah, it was it, it, it showed up on Amazon and Im- available immediately. Now this is not a pre order thing. One at least one guy ordered um, and received it. I'm not. I don't. I don't. I haven't seen anything about how that worked. Um, you can apparently. You can. You can. Uh, Google has this. Uh, has the page cache, so you can see. Um, you can't order now. Um, it uh, cost uh, five hundred bucks. Um, sounds nice. One hundred twenty-eight gigs of built-in storage, and, and you can expand that with a with a card. Um, I'm just, I, I, it's, it, it's got to be a, a bit frustrating. Do we know when it was slated to be announced? Like, how, no, I, the, how, how the, in advance did they get this? Um, the, I, you you got to think that it's fairly close, mm-hmm. um, especially that, you know, if Amazon has some of these actually on hand. Like, it might have been next week. It could be, could be. Um, but uh, just that the, uh, there is, um, if you look at the uh, Verge story that I linked to, um, there is an unboxing video. Uh, so, Someone got a, a very uh, 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 thorough sneak preview. Um, the other thing about this is that I I, um, I ordered a, an iPhone 18 today. Um, the 18. I would I would show it to you, but it's out in my car. Um, it's uh, typing up next tomorrow's newsletter okay. for me. <laughs> okay. Um, before it's going to drive me home. So um, I will maybe I'll be able to show that to you next week. Yeah, this will be a fun little news source for uh, advance. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It makes oh, yeah. you wonder. I'm surprised like we haven't heard more leaks coming out of Amazon warehouses where mm. like some disgruntled worker just yeah. unboxes all kinds of stuff that hey, isn't look at, for sale look at, yet. Look at this box of <laughs> iPhone twelves that's sitting yeah. over here, right? <laughs> you know. Um and, and I, I am I am I mean the awesome thing here is that uh that, that it, if if you're the person who happened to be in the right place at the right time sees this for for however many moments it was it was uh, available mm-hmm. and snags one mm-hmm. boom hit and then had, they send it to you had four or five hundred dollars burning a hole in your pocket yeah. and just went for it yeah. so like because, because if you're out looking for, like if your phone busted right mm-hmm. and you were looking for a moderately priced android device to replace what you and this was mm-hmm. the one that brand new right right i mean latest model just probably ju- was probably something like just released in the title mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, yeah, probably. And anyone could stumble upon this and pick it up. It's not, I guess, it's not like the thousand dollar or twelve hundred dollar Samsung or Apple device. So I, I don't know. But I, I doubt they were looking for this exact device. Probably not. <clears throat> um, again, but there's they, the, the the level of the level of of luck and and good fortune if they if, mm-hmm. if, they're, if they're happy with the phone um, involved with this is is pretty impressive. Mm. Well. We'll see what else we can hop up there. It's interesting because you can't say Best Buy has stuff like that, right? Mm-hmm. But you usually can't get them. Like you'll order them and they'll just sit there. Right? And that's yeah. I, I, that. That is the that is the most mysterious thing. Not not that something would uh, to me anyway. Not that something would show up mistakenly on Amazon, but that it, the order would be fulfilled mm-hmm. um, instead of like an email saying, "Oh gosh, we're really sorry." Uh, we'll send you one when it's ready, or here's yeah. a free month of Amazon Prime and stuff. Um, that that he got it. I, I just yeah, that's that's crazy. Awesome, Chilla. Let's stay with the hardware here. What's your awesome thing of the week? So I think we covered El, the Elgato Stream Deck before. Yeah, I think Alex Carza was interested in this, yeah, and, I, and I think he it. may yeah. have one. I, and I, I've yeah. been surprised how many even large scale enterprise type streams I've seen using the stream deck. Mm-hmm. Um, 
they have a stream deck. The first one was what? Um, let's, let's let's also let's let's kind of point at this like the stream deck is Elgato's kind of thing for making kind of a live switcher, um, so you can bring up graphics and in, in different cameras um, as you're streaming, like to, you know, say a Twitch you, or something. Yeah, you right? can switch. You can switch yeah. profiles. You can actually set it. You can actually set it up to kind of run macros where if you wanted to, to play an audio, switch a title. All kinds of stuff in one tap, and that's where I've seen mm. it used kind of as a build your own macro type yeah, thing. Yeah, and it, it can be used as a kind of lower end version of what we're doing here as we're switching cameras and showing different different screens and, and scenes and things like that, right? Yeah, and the and the buttons on it are customizable, so mm-hmm. you can, I don't know if it's the mini LCDs. Mm-hmm. So you can make the keys look like whatever you want. This I've, reminds me of an old keyboard that was all LEDs. Remember <laughs> yes. that? I've seen people do stuff like, photoshop macros in it yeah. all kinds of yeah you can pretty much program it to do whatever you want it to do mm-hmm. um and they have they had the regular one which i don't remember how many buttons it was three two three five, 15 buttons so there's the 15 button one and then they released like a mini which was six buttons now they have the xl which is 32 buttons which that's cool and all, but what I thought was even cooler was they released an iOS app hmm. that lets you turn your phone into one of these. Into one of these. That's um, cool. So when you think about the Stream Deck XL, it's two hundred and fifty dollars. Um, for, it's it's less than ten dollars a button. Um, but <laughs> the the iOS app has fifteen virtual keys. And it, it pairs with the Stream Deck software via QR code. Um, the interesting thing I thought about the app is there's a free trial, but it's or it's and, and when your free trial's over, it's three dollars a month or twenty five dollars a year. Hmm. So you could use you could use that for ten years before you'd have to if you had a spare an older iPad or something, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I don't know. I, I I find it. You I hear a lot of podcasts that have like sound effects or intro music or anything like that um i could definitely see this being used for that or like a twitch stream like you were talking about um i've seen this a lot on a lot of twitch people's desks so they're obviously controlling a lot from it so pretty cool device for the xl coming in at 250 bucks 32 buttons um or the app which is free trial or three dollars a month 25 dollars a year excellent well, from that, uh, let's go to another kind of hardware. Uh, Katie, what's your awesome thing of the week? Oh, I can't believe this is just happening now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how did, did, it, did how anyone notice Mike's lead in? To... Yeah, it was good. It was it really was, good. Was it wasn't software. It was hardware. Um, so we have a couple uh, made a porn while driving a Tesla on autopilot. Well, they weren't mm. driving. Yeah, so the, that's what I was like. It's a weird <laughs> hey. title. It's like, are you actually driving when you're an autopilot? Um. Yeah, they posted the video up on Pornhub. It's got over 9 million views now. Uh, caught the attention of Elon Musk. And he was he pretty much tweeted, turns out there's more ways to use autopilot than we imagined and should have seen it coming, obviously. <laughs> mm-hmm. hey. um, so yeah, you can mm. check that out on Pornhub. Uh, she has <laughs> changed her name to Tesla Taylor, in case you weren't looking for that particular <laughs> actress. But uh, yeah. This is pretty hilarious. <laughs> it's got nine million views. Well, I love it. I'm, I'm looking through this article you have over here on Inquirer.net, mm-hmm. and it's safe uh, for work. <laughs> well, there's the, the the example video they give is somebody doing their makeup uh, in a Tesla. Yep, that's Jeffrey Star. Jeffrey Star mm-hmm. did a makeup while riding on Tesla. Okay. <laughs> that one has 5.9 million views. I mean, not the nine million views. The other one. No, has. no, no, and definitely a different um, a different uh, website. For sure. Yes. Wow. Just going, going to it. Yep. They? Um, so if you watch, I'm looking us, at the makeup one for you guys on audio. <laughs> yeah, we're not watching the good one. We haven't found crazy. it. Crazy. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Wow. wow. It would be amazing just to see who could do a series of things I did while riding in a Tesla on autopilot. Well, there's mm-hmm. your first one. I mean, <laughs> mm-hmm. there's your first couple at least. <laughs> um, do your makeup. Have some sex. <laughs> Maybe eat some dinner. Play Nintendo Switch. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Now, wait, wait, and now we're interested? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shows where our, I was like, well. Can, what, you, can you have the Tesla make the block? Like if you're close to ending the level or need to get to a save point. Can you, 
Well, I want to know if there's going to be a Tesla tie-in for my awesome thing of the week, which is Mario Kart Beta. Um, I, uh, I, 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 I thank you, thankful the Chilla for his hand-me-down hardware. I have an S6, Samsung S- S6 sitting here. Um, and I also have a Nexus 7 that I've had for a while. And uh, I, I signed up for the beta with one of these phones because you had to do it on Android. It wasn't on iOS. And uh, got the email probably last Wednesday. And uh, have been playing the crap out of this game ever since. I don't even know if I'm allowed to show it, to be quite honest. But we'll find out, right? <laughs> I've seen I've seen people posting screenshots of it. Like, so. There was something about like you can't like technically you're breaking the beta thing. So maybe you'll hear some some deals. Um, but it's it's one handed. It's using you can use just one thumb to kind of play. Um, you know, you tap to to you know, push, uh, uh, you know, to, to use items. Um, there is a lot of kind of monetization kind of situations going on here. You can't buy anything yet, but you kind of see the infrastructure. It's one of those, you buy emeralds or you gain emeralds through doing things. And, uh, it allows you to, you know, opportunities to get, uh, characters randomly. If you're familiar with, uh, uh Mario run, how you'd always do the pipe thing. And, and sometimes you get, um, you know, different things for, for your, um, see if I can play this backwards here. This will be fun. Uh, so, and I'll still win. Um, on the earlier levels, actually, you will. It is super stupid easy for the first couple cups that they have on here. I'm about halfway through the cups, and I think there's about probably like maybe about 15 different cups. There are four, uh, three tracks and a special, um, a special challenge each. Um, you kind of randomly uh, get your new characters, um, and there's depending on certain characters are. Um, set to certain tracks. So if I have like Mario on like the Mario SNES track, like he'll get three slots for items and an extra boosts and, and you're leveling everybody up. So it's got definitely got that mobile flavor to it. Um, but uh, it's it's a lot of fun. I'm playing the crap out of it. Uh, Chachi and I were both talking about it the first day and uh, he, he called it an endless ride, <laughs> an endless runner. Uh, of Mario Kart because it was like far far too easy to get first place for the for several tracks. Like I, I was probably about six tra- uh, six uh, cups in before I wasn't getting first place on every track in the 50 CC, and then I started bumping up the CCs right. Um, but it's it's a lot of fun. I think a lot of people are going to be addicted to it. It's a nice kind of next step, and it feels like Mario Kart. It really does just feel like Mario Kart, even just using your one thumb. Do they? Like in the Mario run, you had like the little village where you could expand the village or right. build the monuments. Is there, does it seem like there's anything like that? No, nothing like that. It's just kind of you know, like getting the characters. Bragging rights right. for getting the characters. Yeah, like like Metal Mario was a special thing for this. And again, you had to gain up uh, emeralds and like one emerald gives you one random thing out of the pipe. And there's a there's hundred items and Mario's one of them, right? So you get chances. So it's like random loot boxes, basically. Which is, you know, as one article called it, the worst kind of. There's a lot, a lot of articles um, really railing against this for the microtransactions, but it's been mostly fun to play, and you don't run into anything until you start not getting first place all the time. Then you start losing hearts. Um, plays really well, even on the Nexus 7, a little jaggy, but it still, like, what was I saying earlier? It still looks better than the N64 version of those tracks. So it's a. What I like about the the model or the, the you, you freemium played, model, yeah, I played it for a little, for, a, for a little bit, and it was easy to play. It was fun. Um, so I think they can go two routes with this, right? They can go the the Mario Run route, where it's we give you one level and it's ten dollars for the remainder, mm-hmm. or they're all free. And there were opportunities for microtransactions there. Yep. <clears throat> um, or they're all free, and you can pay for upgrades that may or may not impact your ability to finish i really want to get that i really want to get that iggy koopa yes or that baby daisy or something right which i i would rather play the freemium because i don't mind grinding it out Mm -hmm. especially for the games that like it it sounded like you what you have hearts and if you don't win then you lose hearts yeah you knock out hearts and it's like 10 minutes for them to come back 10 minutes for them to come back and that's bad and you can you get it's not bad and you can get the hearts you the emeralds give you chances to get more coins that you can buy um, upgrades for your carts and your players uh, with tickets that you bought with the coins. So it's a, it's that thing I was talking about. It's that thing that annoys me where there's these different levels of currency and I have to buy the thing to get a chance to get more of the thing to actually buy the thing I want digitally, right? 
Yeah, yeah, I would rather. Just I think have I think fun with the problem. It was like if you if there was a like I just dropped ninety nine cents on my Carmageddon on my phone, like the one based on the original DOS game, to just unlock all the cars. Because uh, I did, I did that. You did, you did that too. Ago. Yes. Yeah, because it was one of those like <laughs> I I, it's, it never fails with that game on the DOS version uh-huh. and on the phone. I would play through, unlock a bunch of cars, mm-hmm. something would happen to my save game, and I had to start from scratch. Uh, yes. <laughs> right? Yes. Like, exactly. just that, that classic exactly. problem in it, with it. And it's like, screw it. I'm getting all the cars. Now I got the bulldozer. I don't care. Yes. I was, I had time in an airport. I'm doing this. Although, the people in the airport watching me play Carmageddon and just running people over, uh, <laughs> I was probably a little <laughs> bit concerned, because I think I was playing it on the plane, actually. Um, yeah. Yeah. And so, so there, there's that situation. If too. you're not shouting about the game, it's, it's I'm not. It's I'm not. Point. I'm just like okay. mindfully playing my okay. game where I just ran over a cow. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, that's my awesome thing. Mario Kart Tour is in beta right now. If you didn't sign up for it, I'm not sure if you can get into it. Um, you, there may be an opportunity if you you find the link for the beta uh, sign up, you might be able to still hop on it. It is running. It, I believe the beta is running until the sixth of July. So I think you can look for it uh, widely on every platform, including iOS, shortly after that. So did they just? Because you said it didn't come through the store, so they're not using. Well, they the, emailed me. You could probably you know, find it in the store. But it's a direct. It's a direct. Did you download the APK, or did you, it bounce you out to Google Play? I believe I went to Google Play, but okay. it has me sign in with my Nintendo account. And I think to that's... Google Play or to. No, after you to download the app. the app, you have to you have to sign in okay. with your Nintendo account. And I think that has your beta access on it. So, um, And it saves everything across. Uh, it, it syncs everything between my Nexus and my Samsung. So uh, hopefully that also works when it comes over to iOS. When I'm still going to play it forever. I can't wait to play this thing on a on my 12-inch iPad. <laughs> wonder if they'll have controller support. <laughs> I doubt it. No, no, I really doubt it with this setup. There is gyro support for it, but I, I just feel like... There's what support? Uh, gyro, like oh, gyro. turning okay. turning your phone, but I I don't feel like that's worthwhile. So you mean you have to use your hands? I have to <laughs> use your hands, man. Ah, oh, jeez. Hey, you know who else is all good at using their hands? Psych. <laughs> well, one, those people win the Tesla. Uh, hey. Second of all, <laughs> uh, us over here at Psychic Media Services. Hey, that's us. That's here. We do things like this, like this podcast and podcasts similar to this, like for our friends at. Um, over at the Pittsburgh Cart, for instance, right? Uh, Psychic Media Services. Uh, it is uh, you know everything from sporting events. We just did an eye pay per view for a women's wrestling group uh, this past weekend. We just did a music video for Nick Ivan that's uh, just been recently released. And I understand like his most viewed, uh, the quickest to to a large number of hits that uh, that he's had so far, and so much more. We're filming Baja. We're filming wrestling. We're filming music videos. We're filming we're filming conferences. Um, all kinds of great, great things. Uh, we're your streaming media experts. Go check out everything we got working on over at SidekickMediaServices.com. And and because because uh, we, we're fixing the Instagram, there's also the Sidekick Dogs are there too. Uh, so our Sidekicks are hanging out on the website. Go check out everything at SidekickMediaServices.com. Website, podcast, uh, video, so much more over there. Um, it's what it's how we try to pay the bills around here. And uh, and uh, apply what we've been doing in ten years of awesome cast and fourteen years of wrestling mayhem show, you know, to uh, build up. So go check it out. All right, let's take a look at what some of you guys out there in the awesome cast group have been talking about. Uh, first, we do have one from Dave Podner out there in the chat room. Let me get this guy loaded up here real quick. Um, but <laughs> this is a. Well, I was just talking about I fixed my Sorgatron.com blog. Uh, it was mm-hmm. wasn't working, and you know I just re yeah reconnected it. Google did something weird, right? Or I'm sorry, GoDaddy did something weird, and I realized in like 2016 I was like telling everybody to hold their phones the right way. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, here's you know, he, he. I think he shared this both on here on Wrestling Mayhem Show. <laughs> but just a reminder, he said not sure if Mayhem Show or Awesome Cats, but remember to watch your orientation for videos. This is a, a WWE pro wrestler Bailey. And uh, her video is definitely sideways. Uh, so, <laughs> hey, watch it, guys. It, it gets, us, gets us every once in a while. Plus, I mean, to be fair, I mean, you guys have had the thing where you've taken a picture, uploaded to, like, maybe Facebook, and we're like, why is this sideways? Mm-hmm. It wasn't on my phone. Yeah, yes. Yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. this happens. So just, you know, double check your thing. Make sure it went up the way that you uh, you want, wanted to. And, of course, Podner is the 
uh, expert over there at Tiny Shutter Podcast. We'll give him a plug for your uh, uh, iPhone photography. Um, this one is from uh, Brian Crawford. Let me get this guy loaded up over here. And uh, this is a mu mu muwo muwo mu m e i w o. It's a new upgraded, deeper and bigger. My wall. Here we go. Uh, <laughs> a seven pocket hanging vertical garden wall planner. <laughs> what the heck? Uh, oh, he's. I I think he only has so much apartment space over there. So he's. It, this, this looks like one of those like um, netted shoe racks you put on the back of a door. But it's for your home garden. Now I can't see the screen from here for the price. Is this the one that's thirteen, like thirteen bucks? Um, this is thirteen dollars. I so this came up in my feed over the oh, weekend, yeah? and I actually added it to my wish list. Really? Because I do want to get this, but I'm past my planning season. So Brian's saying that um, his comment on it is, uh, uh, "Wow, living walls have been on." <laughs> oh, all the rage for years now. The item is such a cool concept that allows people to create a similar experience if they rent or do not want to install necessary hardware to have a living wall. It seems uh, to essentially be one of the home storage units you hang from your closet. You say, you know, convert to a vertical planner. Uh, unique spin on old tech. I love this idea. And remember, we were talking about like the algae people uh, over at the hardware cup that, you know, <laughs> the whole idea was, you know, helps your, you know, have that, that fresh air in your home. I mean, mm -hmm. that's, that's what the plants are doing for your home as well so that's one way for you to do that riz Why? riz 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 i'm not even going to click this link uh the queen receives over one million penis pics since joining instagram oh, i read this as queen like i thought it was like the music group no <laughs> no, no 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 it's i believe it's the queen no it's I the queen because it just said her, queen receives her not the majesty. queen <laughs> the queen no That's... her majesty the queen not the surviving members of the freddie mercury fronted band um I, I love the picture they use here she looks so happy uh, <laughs> of course with the w is this weather underground is oh uh, w underground music is the website apparently thanks riz thanks for that all right and I was trying to see if I could make another hardware segue. Um, <laughs> hey. hey. Uh, our friend Chris Whitlatch uh, sent us an article as well. This one uh, from Modern Healthcare is telling us about how hospitals are testing virtual reality to improve pain management and reduce opioid usage. This is something from, I feel like we've talked about this early on. Like, you know, remember this was, you know, they were using like Google Glass and virtual reality to like send like the elderly to Paris and things like that. Um, Taking different nature walks yeah. and things of that nature. I mean, you know, how many, you know, mindfulness things are going on there. I mean, this, this makes a lot of sense because I mean, it, it's, it's puts you in a different environment and it can mm -hmm. help soothe and get the right, get the right chemicals going through your brain. Right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, thanks, Chris, for that. We'll have all those linked, of course, in the show notes. If you guys want to go a little deeper, Stephen Chowering says, has the queen joined Pornhub? Katie, mm -hmm. can you check in for that for us? Oh, yeah. Does okay. she have a Tesla? Does she, Does she, she have, anyone, a Tesla? have a Tesla? Does anyone know? I don't know. I, I mean, I don't, I don't. I assume she hasn't actually driven a car in about a million years. Right. But I mean, I don't know if she can, she's allowed to auto drive herself <laughs> either. Right. I mean, I mean, although you, blind. Just, you, you close the window between you and the driver and <laughs> do whatever you <laughs> whatever need to happens do. in the back seat happens yeah. in the back seat. Yeah. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I, you know, what? I liked it better on that. We thought that article was about queen, the band. Um, <laughs> I'm sure they. Can, I'm sure they've been getting penis pics for years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably. Anyways, somebody who will not send you a, a penis pic is our friend Alex Cars out in California. Alex oh, Cars Media putting together the puzzle of design and media from branding to print and digital products. Alex can do logos, merchandise, websites, and even photo and video projects. That's Alex Cars K A H R S dot Media out there. He does a lot of really cool stuff. Um, and he's worked with us on a few projects here at uh, Sorgatron Media, Psychic Media Services. Um, it's kind of our hired gun every once in a while when we need to design something up uh, uh, for for whatever project that we need to do. Go check him out, alexcars.media, and uh, check out his stuff and what he can do for you. 
All right, back in the book here. Oh, what do we got? <laughs> um, this was, I swear, was one of you tell, talking to me about, somebody was just talking to me about an iPod Touch that they were using. Um, something about their data or something. Was somebody that was in here or something? I, I, I know, swear. I, I, I thought we were saying, the, the last time I remember talking about the iPod Touch was one, a couple weeks ago when Apple was doing like the back-to-back release announcements and we're like where's the ipod where we were like where's the ipod touch and unless crazy kraus was talking something about like he knows someone that's like still I, using I just it. know somebody was loading one up because they use it so that they don't use their data so they load everything on an ipad touch to listen to their music or whatever they need to do so that's that's uh that's still saying i don't i mean i i don't i don't care about the data but I, i'm still um because i am old I prefer to not. I'm I'm getting used to streaming. This is a thing. This is a process. You're an audiophile too, right? Uh, yeah, um, a little bit. I, I it's you know if I can avoid MP3s, um, and that's not always practical, but mm-hmm. but it, it's it's nice um, for for certain things. The record player is a little heavy to lug around. Uh, uh, that's that's tough. <laughs> that is tough. <laughs> so I still have, and, and this is becoming a challenge. I still have old school iPods. Mm-hmm. Um and hard when drives? they die, With hard yeah, drives? Yeah. yeah, and and I'm I think we still have a 130 uh, around the office. I have uh the only functioning one that I have now. I, what is what was the largest? It's 160 gigs I th- for the hard drive one. Yeah, it feels like I think that's I, I think I have color one. one? No, this is uh, not a color. It's actually, it's one of the fat ones. That that, that was mm. just like one half generation that they did. Um, and I know, you know, um. I, I, I scour eBay and I keep trying to, to find the right balance of, of function and expense, and that's becoming more and more difficult. Mm-hmm. So this might be this might be a thing. Steve says you're not old. By the way, the thing we're talking about is oh the, no, I, I am I am the yeah, iPod yeah, Touch. Yeah. No, trust me, trust me on this. <laughs> uh, they released a new iPod Touch with the A10 chip and 256 gigabytes of storage. 250. There you go. That is the equivalent of an iPhone 7, I believe. And because yeah, don't forget the 8 and the 10 came out at the same time, and there was no 9. Right. 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 So that's the A10 chip. Um, so, I mean, still speedy enough for all your stuff. They say it's going to be compatible with the game subscription that's going to be coming out in a few months here hmm. in the fall. And it'll do FaceTime groups. What's that? It'll do the FaceTime, FaceTime groups. groups. That's important. I mean, this is like, this is the one you get for your kid. This is the one you get for somebody that doesn't need the data is on Wi-Fi all the time, right? The only thing that I wish they would have done is the it's still the four inch screen. Mm hmm. Like, I wish they would have gone, I don't expect them to go like the 10 full body, no uh, ten, uh, four no inch. bezels. So that's like, that's still like iPhone 5S size, right? I think it's iPhone 4S. Is it the 5? Yeah, maybe it is. 5, 5S. Yeah, like I, can we at least got, gotten like the, the refurb screens off the old broken sixes? <laughs> like, I think they could have gone... A notch. I would have rather them gone a notch up on the screen and raise it twenty five to fifty dollars. Yeah. Well, I, I again, I think it's for the you know it's for the uncle crappies of the world. They're using. By the way, Steve. Yeah, say Steve says. Oh no, I already said that part. Sorry. I'm moving back into. I appreciate my chat that, room. Steve. Thank By you. the way, still you're not old. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's see. What else do we have here, Dutters? Do you have anything in here you want to talk about? Um, I what, think you should what, probably what? look at something. Oh, look at the dock. I... Go to the dock. Go to the dock. Look, go, I'm in the dock. I'm in the look dock. Look at the question to the left. Question to the left. Oh, well, can I, I still uh... record porn in my Tesla with the new iPod Touch? Yes, I believe you can. There you go. It's, it's only a 1.2 megapixel front-facing camera, though. It's not going to look great. It is, well, <laughs> you know what? It's going to look like doable. you recorded it on it's, your old flip phone. Listen, but. it's like the vinyl of recording porn. Uh, mm. I mean, does it really matter the quality? <laughs> okay, that's, yeah, okay. We're not. I don't know if we're as interested in the sound in this one. <laughs> Sorry, Katie, you were saying? <laughs> no, I was just saying, does the quality actually matter? The act of what's happening is probably the bigger Yeah, thing. I mean, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> I think Sorg has an expectation of like multi-cam edits. Ooh. Would you be the switcher? Could we put you in the back seat of a Tesla? <laughs> <laughs> with with three iPod touches? Yes. 
<laughs> camera one, camera two. Head over to Patreon one, and support two. the show so we can send Sorg in a back new, of a self-driving new Tesla. New project. <laughs> Katie, please help me with her next thing. Oh, no, I don't want to. Um, Tell me about Modzi. <laughs> Modzi. So Modzi is a California and uh, San Francisco startup. And what they are doing is using AR technology. They've just got, they had 37 million in the first round of funding and now 23 million in the second round of funding. Mm -hmm. Huge amounts of money. Using AR to essentially change the look of your house inside and out. Um, And there's talk of a certain amount of money. It's like goes anywhere from 69 to $349. So you can do different looks for your house. So if you're like wondering what it would look like if I would paint my walls green or if I would paint this. It looks really, really easy to use. Mm -hmm. Uh, Essentially just show them, take some, photos uh measure the space tell them what you want to do and then they give you custom design plans like the area the plans and then uh, you can revise your designs and then that way you could decide you know what do i want to buy what looks good in this space it tells you like like one thing is like like it's showing your options of couches and tells you this one's at crate and barrel this one's at pottery barn mm-hmm. this one's at the dwr i guess uh, so that's interesting. So they, they, they give you the plans and then you go, you go from there mm-hmm. and then you can figure out, let's go to and Ikea you, and you find out what's behind your walls and then it's going to be so much more expensive. Yep. <laughs> they don't talk about that. No, 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 no. Now that I think this is more like I'm redesigning my condo, not my, uh, nearly hundred year old home in Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. Uh, but no, that's kind of cool. That's kind of, I, I'd love to, I, I, Hey mom, are you still in the, in the chat room? Uh, my mom's a, a designer herself. Uh, designed at least one of the homes that we lived in, and uh, and and poised to do another one. Uh, so I'd be curious her her thoughts on something like this. It'd be cool so. if you're moving into like a new space, yeah. And you kind of wanted to see what it looked like yeah. before you got in there and really like dug in. Like, oh, would green look okay? Mm-hmm. Like, kind of not so much the remodel, but the first round of things. Mm-hmm. When when Mrs. Crappy uh, was in charge of a paint department at a local Home Depot, um, she pointed out that they have an app. I haven't looked at this for a while. You upload uh, images of, of a room, your room. You, you, you take pictures, upload, and then you can pick color schemes um, to help you select paint. Um, so you can actually see with, you know, with the furniture you have in it. And it, I did a nice job of working around furniture. You know, you, so you're, you're not suddenly turning your couch purple mm-hmm. or something like that. Mm-hmm. But um, it was just a, a similar kind of thing. And, and uh, really cool. Um, in our case, it added to the paralysis of trying to pick colors. <laughs> so we haven't actually, we, we still have to get around to painting something. But um, but it was, I mean, it's, it's still more thing. And, and a really cool application of that stuff mm-hmm. to, to give you a sense of what stuff's, what's going to look like. Man, I remember the applications in like the early 2000s, late 90s, that you could like take her floor plans and turn it into a 3D mm-hmm. version of that building. Right, like the first applications of those, yeah. like that long ago. And of course, that's like a button in AutoCAD now. <laughs> you know? Yes, it's like I'm sure. Or you can pretty much do it with your phone and measure and and uh, you know put you know you can take the IKEA app and put it put a a, a a couch over here and see how it looks. Right. So, all right, let's see what else we got here. Chilla, lots of contras coming. I'm Lots excited about Contra. I was a big Contra Many fan. a Contra. Many a up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA, select, start. Now, I use that on my Ninja Turtles, too. <clears throat> I didn't know it worked on that. Yeah, well, it was a bunch of economy games. What, what surprised me about this, so there's seven unique games. So this is the Contra Anniversary Collection that's coming out for multiple platforms. Yes. Right? Which will be Contra, Super Contra, both arca- the arcades. Mm-hmm. Contra NES, Super C NES, Operation C Game Boy. Which is, will they put that in color? That'll be interesting. Contra 3 Alien Wars from Super Nintendo. Contra Hardcore Cores from Sega Genesis. Regional variants from Japan and Europe. And the thing that surprised me was the European versions were altered, swapping in robots for any of the human characters to get around local laws against violent content. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought that was interesting. And then they're actually going to be, there's going to be a free update for the game that's going to add six more Japanese variations. Now, are those, those are not the ones that are kind of redone, right? Like Contra Arcade, Super Contra Arcade. They're not, they're not like the, the censored ones. Oper- What's that? They're not the the season. They're, the, they're not the um, censored ones. Or probably mostly Europe was. 
Yeah, I, I think Europe was. They didn't say what the difference in the Japanese variation was. Mm-hmm. Um, but they do mimic six of the seven original titles. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what they say the variant is across those. That's cool. So, like, mostly I haven't played much with the arcade ones. It's been all, like, Contra Super C uh, on the Nintendo's Operation C on my Game Boy, a little bit of the Super Nintendo one, um, the really kind of weird PlayStation one here and there. Is that in there? I don't see the PlayStation one. I don't see that one. Well, at least it's better than this. The list, the list I saw just said Contra, Super Contra, 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 Contra. I didn't tell you what platforms <laughs> what they were on. It? I'm just like, what is this? You know, it was a really bad website I found before. So that's I don't cool. know if your I don't know if your site had it. I can't find on this the site I found. Um, I didn't see a price. I've seen twenty dollars for this. That's not okay. bad. But that was on the it's that, that was on the site that didn't uh, distinguish the Contras. Um, and I believe the Castlevania collection is going to be the same thing. So, okay. and again, with some variations and stuff like that. So, um, looking, I, I'm, that's worthwhile to me. Drop that mm-hmm. on the Xbox and, you know, be able to play all the Contras I want. I'm curious to see what a, um, original Game Boy green and yellow, uh, <laughs> version will look like on Did the Xbox. Did they update that for like when Game Boy Color came out? I don't was think there, it was um... too old. It was too old to do that. I think like they, you know, you had different colors, but it was like still four. So, <laughs> mm. We'll see how that goes. I have, I have fond memories, and that's still yeah, on my nightstand right next to the Dr. Mario uh, in the original Game Boy uh, and SP and stuff. So, no, that's real cool. Let's see. Uh, Katie, I know you kind of like this other thing that I shared earlier today. Oh, the bathroom um, thing. No, not the bathroom. <laughs> I wasn't going to bring up the bathroom one on here. I was, <laughs> I was talking Perfect. about the He-Man thing today. The He-Man, yes. You, you shared this with me. Yes. Big, we're big He-Man, She-Ra fans. Big He-Man, She-Ra fans. And I'm still bugging her to, to watch the new She-Ra con- I the show. I, I still have to get through season two. But this is a I'm busy pa- this week. I have all my Godzillas to watch. Oh, you have all my Godzillas. All my VHS Godzillas. <laughs> wait. Wait, speaking of which, so, well, wait, wait, the item, the item, wait, we'll get to that in a second. The <laughs> item is, this is a He-Man power sword shaped power bar, mm-hmm. like plugs, your power strip with USBs and everything like that. I'm, I'm interested to know where the, which end the wire comes out of. I'm, gu- is it to come I'm out guessing the handle? handle. It's, it's gotta, gotta, be, it's the gotta handle. be the handle, right? It's gotta yeah. be the handle. I it's would worry, like, I would want to pick this up and swing it around and just wires would <laughs> go everywhere. Smash. Yeah. I like the fact that it does have the USB plugs, though. Mm-hmm. Uh, Katie, you, nice you had you had a technical issue this week. I trying did. Trying to watch your, go, your, your Godzilla. My, my, VC, my VCR, DVD, and TV combo. I'm not sure if it's... <laughs> this is the worst part ever. It was I'm like, sorry, all three? Yeah. Well, no. Okay. So, so I tried to... I put the three VHS one. tape in. So three yeah, it's all three. And it was about like maybe a 13-inch television. No, it's bigger than that. 15? I do have a 13 inch, but this is bigger than that. Okay. <laughs> so it's maybe like low 20s. Um, so I, yeah, I put my VHS tape in. Oh, and... this is different. This is the one I, this is the one I gave you. Okay. Maybe this is. <laughs> I think I just gave you a, uh, I just gave you a built in VCR one. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know where I got this. <laughs> you got an old tech, just send it to my house, apparently. Um, so it was, it was something where I, so it came up, turned it on, and I, Put the VHS tape in. It went from VHS, was on for a second, then switched which, over to auxiliary, and then which pff, God, out. Which Godzilla was it? Uh oh, shoot! Which one was? Ah, I can't remember which one it was. Watching. Okay, not important. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I was gonna start my. I'm box sorry, that's set. that's really important. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It was uh, starting with my box set, and um, because I, I have <laughs> the box set the plus baby out? Godzilla. Yes, I did. Thank goodness. Okay, I would have been helpful. so upset if I would have lost that because I was like, it's so important to me. Because you really can't just give VHS tapes back now. Uh, no, you can't. Megalon. Megalon. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Godzilla versus Megalon. Okay. Mm. And so I'm probably going home tonight with a VCR that I took from my mom's house and try to hook it up to my combo in the auxiliary to see if that works. So that's why I have the beer. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me how your life's going here. Happy, <laughs> happy I could help. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> um, I, I want to see the TV combo with a v- an extra up. VCR plugged yeah, it's into a nice it. Nice forehead. It's massive. It's <laughs> I want to see. That, so that actually should be like the um, the 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 next uh, cover photo for the awesome cast Facebook page. Mm-hmm. I, I think there, my record players were underneath t- it too. <laughs> <laughs> perfect i mean and there's a genesis yes. on top of the record yes. player right now 
I don't know she what year de- it is. She deals with high tech all day in social media. Yeah. Sure. Mm-hmm. So she goes home to her like, I'm going to party like it's 1994. It's fine. She yeah. pretends like she's stuck in Back to the Future. Yeah. yeah. I can be okay with that. And she walks out like, what year is it? Let me see a newspaper. Um, and what's a newspaper? <laughs> <laughs> hey, now. Let's hey, 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 hey. I mean, the, 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 the days are numbered, but but for right now, we're still... I want to say, like, you know, our friends at Thrifty do the um, the cassette tape dubbing, and then they digitize the cassette tapes to mm-hmm. get that, you know, that sound mm-hmm. of a cassette tape. Yeah. Like, is, is somebody doing just VHS dubs of movies we can completely get on Blu-ray now? <laughs> just for that authenticity of watching somebody in 1989. Watching Die I have Hard. a few MP3s that I've downloaded years ago from nefarious sources that have like CD skips in them. Even though oh it's, wow, <laughs> it's really funny because it'll come up. Every I time. have my own CDs that have CD skips that are still in there, and uh, you know I've mostly gotten a lot of them out of there. But it'd, uh, it'd be cool if you could find ones where did you ever record the radio like on yeah. your tape yes. deck? Mm-hmm. Oh yes, mm-hmm. it'd be oh, interesting yes. if you could get like. The tail end of the DJ introducing the song because it's yeah, and, it always overlapped and uh-huh. you could never get it cut. It never yeah. provided a clean cut. So if you could get old dubs of that in MP3 format, that would be kind of kind of funny. He first makes tapes. I mean, <laughs> and and you would sit and listen to stereo for hours mm-hmm. for particular songs. Um, I wasted minutes of my life, mm-hmm. more than minutes. But no, I, I, I that's not correct. I, I that wasn't. They, they were not wastes. They were absolutely worth it. I should tell you guys about my ALF project sometime. Ooh. Yeah, it involved cassette tapes. That's that's probably for a uh, after dark at some point. Okay. Anyways, uh, here's here's how about hey, you know what video games don't get enough of these days? You want to go old school? How about a crank? This one's on TechCrunch. This is a uh, Panic's Playdate is a pint sized gaming machine with a season of twelve titles. And again, it looks like a very square Game Boy. Uh, I believe this is a black and white system, and there is a crank on the side. 2.7 inch, 400 by 240 screen, no backlight, not e-paper, just an LCD without color features. Huh. It's uh, pretty standard, uh, but uh, it's going to retail for $150. Jeez. And yeah, for, for basically kind of an old Game Boy situation. Um, you're going to get all the games over the wireless connection. Um, <laughs> put, but they put Wi-Fi in it. There's 12 of them, exclusives um, from the developers of uh, Katamari Damachi um, and a couple other games. Uh, yeah, so... <laughs> Does it have Snake? The first title is Kraken's Time Travel Adventure. I bet I know what control that uses. Um, <laughs> yeah, so... <laughs> I... This is a thing. Uh... <laughs> So that's Panic's play date. Look out for that. I maybe can, can you link them together for competitive play? I, I, Since I there's know. Wi-Fi, it's Wi-Fi, why not? Right? It's not like the old sync cord on the on the Jeez. Game Boy. And finally, finally, I had to. I had to. This is a video. Uh, so sorry for that. But this is a. This is a for Geek Day. This is a uh, from Lego. It's a Lego pa- pack bot. They are a uh, box. I'm, I'm these AI kind of, I guess you play as a fully functional model of Pac-Man with, you know, the boxes are ghosts and, and, and your Pac-Man and everything. And it's kind of a, <laughs> and it's just kind of like a, a, a play board of a maze. And uh, I guess it all reacts and it's all made of Legos and, and your Lego uh, Mindstorms functionality there. How do you get like the power pellet that lets you eat the ghosts? And how does that know. work? I don't know, but I want to know. <laughs> so if anybody gets their hands on one of these Pac-Man sets or, or builds one or whatever the case may be, because I don't know if this was like a, I don't know if this was a, I think this was a made version. Like, I don't think you can buy like the Pac-Man set. Mm-hmm. This is just, we put this together with Mindstorm. So it might, I mean, I love that. I love the stuff that, you know, kids get to, play with with the the mindstorms um thing so but anyways oh hey also related one guy put a an entire game system a game what was it they put a entire game console into a game boy cartridge i don't know that wow. and i think it is a game boy that they put in there too so even smaller like, like frogger 
It doesn't have a crank, guys, but uh, <laughs> but um, I guess it's easier to put an LCD screen in when it only has four colors. So um, this was pretty cool. And yeah, they're, they're playing Space Invaders on it, um, and it'll fit into your Game Boy <laughs> still. So this is uh, from 3D Sage, I believe. So you can check that out in the uh, YouTube video as well. So cool. All right. Well, and that note, I uh, want to give uh, one last shout out to our friends feeding the awesome cast tonight, except for Katie and her taco-ness. I had taco party. Uh, but <laughs> there's reasons. There's reasons. Just, just got to get her tacos on. Mm-hmm. But our good friends at Slice on Broadway supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. Here in Beachview, the OG, uh, Carnegie, PA, East End, and PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Yay, uh, PNC you, Park yeah, location. You, you love that one because you're just like a block away from there. So. Uh, yeah, yeah. Ish. I mean, well, it's, the other, it's the other side, but still. Um, but uh, it's some delicious, awesome, um, great stuff, and, and like talking wrestling with those guys down there as well. Go check them out, sliceonbroadway.com, or any of those locations around town, and let them know that the awesome cast sent you. Uncle Crappy, Mike Pound, Beer Me. What's going on with Beer Me? Um, I, 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 I need a show. If you run a brewery, um, and want to be on video here sometime soon, let me know. I, I just saw a brewery was having a free uh, pinball play day. Um, that's probably, uh, that, that's, that's probably the, uh, the brewery in, um, in Oakdale. They have, they've put together, uh, Pelican, they've put Ooh. together a really impressive kind of game room. I, and I, I think it's mostly pinball. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, and I haven't been out there for a while cause it's, it's, you know, it's in Western part of the County. It's a, it's a hike. Um, the beer is absolutely worth the, the trip though. And if you like pinball and, and that sort of stuff, you have a bonus, can I come oh. for the pinball and stay for the beer? Yes. Okay. Yes. It's worth a lot. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Absolutely. Sounds Absolutely. like a plan to me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, but you can check out everything on Beer Me. Uh, um, I did. I did. Think about this. Post dash gazette dot com slash Beer Me. Um, you can also subscribe to fee, uh, PG Feed. That is our daily news newsletter that I write most of the time, and our weekend events newsletter called. That PG weekend thing, also mine. That's that, that's the title. That's the title. That's awesome. <laughs> go go check it out. I really As, like your T-shirt. Thank you. Thank I, you. I don't know if you can read it I, at I, home. I, I, at at home, it's squished ha- up here. It says hashtag uh, not the enemy. Not the enemy. Um, it's a thing. Mm-hmm. Let's support our journalist friends mm-hmm. out Thank there. You. Thank you. Doing doing the work, doing the good work. Uh, between you and the others we had on the show, others that we've worked with with Sidekick Media Services. Uh, you know, friends of the show like Post Industrial and uh, the Public Source and, and yeah. Pittsburgh Current. A lot of good stuff happening out there. Yeah, absolutely. So, absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. So, good thank you so much, Uncle Crappy, for thank joining you us. For me. Uh, Katie Dutters. Hi. Hi. I'm not wearing a good shirt. What? <laughs> I'm not wearing a good shirt. Exciting shirt. You're wearing the penguins. Is That's that a player? Is that, is that a jersey? Uh, this is, I think it's an old. Uh, I don't know who I'm... I Jerome Ingla, in, in, Ingla. Ingla, Ingla, thank you. Ingla, it's, but been, it's been like, a long time since I've had to think how that's oh pronounced. Oh gosh, it's probably been six years since he I, like, Yeah, yeah in there? Five. I don't know, it's been a long time. Time travels quicker than I expected. <laughs> you just did a Scarehouse Weekly? I did. Uh, it's a little past, but you get to see all the weird stuff that you were selling. Oh yeah, you could see all the, the weird things the, we sold. As I've done at the Scarehouse Yard Sale. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> I'm okay with that. Yeah, we did a lot of stuff. It was really fun. Awesome. Uh, any podcasts or anything coming up? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. Sure. <laughs> okay. Keep an ear out because surprise, there might be a show. They just show up when I feel They do. Like. They do. And people listen. That's great. Uh, John Chilla at Chilla on the tweets. Chillatech.net. Or, hey, speaking of beer and podcasting and whatnot, are they doing a pod crawl again? Or is that, like, I have not is that heard, a one and done? I have not heard of another pod crawl happening, though. Okay. Yeah, I don't think that's come together again. But Brian the, should get on that. Well, I think there's something else that Brian's getting on right now. Oh. And... Is it in a Tesla? Whoa. No. Hey. <laughs> Are you switching? Oh, That's a new pod crawl. <laughs> That's a new pod crawl. Oh, boy. Okay. Um, we need to reconsider what venues we can have Awesome Cast Live now. Uh, <laughs> I mean, there's that thing where we're just yelling Pornhub at the business show. Um, but hey. That worked out well for us. Pornhub. <laughs> that did. What did I yell? She's on Pornhub right now? Yes. Yeah, uh, they won't invite us back probably. Um, <laughs> um, go check out everything at awesomecast.com. Thank you, producer Missy, for Yay. handling Yay. people walking into our studio during the show. 
and and shooing them away because they're at the wrong business, apparently. Um, so Keeping you in line. I mean, is nobody, like, do we look like we're about to rent you an apartment here when you look through the window? Does this, does this look, listen, internet, does this look like the kind of people you would rent an apartment from? Nope. No, I don't I, think so. It, it, there's Iron Man in the front window. I would definitely rent an apartment I from mean, you. <laughs> there you go. Well, there you go. They Dude, must have look money. at all the TVs in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe so they thought you were a tanning salon. She's coming over with a mission, uh, too. I was like, she'd be like, I want to get this damn apartment. It's like, oh. um, anyways, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Thank you, everybody, in the chat room on the Facebook. Uh, that's been going all night long and, and making us feel better about ourselves. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.